What's up guys, how are you all doing? Hey, welcome to the next video. We're gonna be checking out how to auto start your Pandora using your Google Assistant. Basically, you'll be able to ask Google Assistant uh, to play your favorite playlists and whatnot in Pandora, as well as turn the volume up, turn the volume down, stop, start, pause, and all that fun stuff. So if that sounds like something that'll interest you, please stay tuned, because that's coming up right here, right now on MI's Ferry. What's up guys, hello and welcome to the uh, short version of what we're about to do here, and that is get our Google Pie to play our Pandora music, utilizing some very interesting techniques and using uh, the Home Assistant to fire it all off. So what we're gonna be need is the setup is gonna be, I've got two Raspberry Pis, okay? So I like to keep mine separate, that way if I wanna change out the Google Pie into an actual Google Home or an Alexa or something like that, I don't have to rebuild anything. But this is gonna be on, uh, the the Google Pie separate from the Home Assistant. So they're two different platforms. So in order for them, for the Google Assistant or the Home Assistant to activate the Google Assistant uh, to play, you know, basically run the Pandora software on it and get it to play music because I want it to come from the Google Pie and not the Home Assistant because the Home Assistant's in my back room. Then I need to be able to SSH to it without using the keys. So that's the first thing that we're gonna get going. So to get our keys going, we're going to use the SSH key gen command to go ahead and generate our keys. So here's the command right here. I just gave it the name Haas at Pi. You can give it whatever name you would like. This will generate the public and private RSA keys that we'll be needing. The public one is the one that we will be transferring over to the other Raspberry Pi to get it to work. So once this is done generating, it's going to ask you for the default uh, place to put it. So we're just going to use the same default. It's going to ask you for a passphrase. Uh, we'll just go ahead and skip that and just go ahead and generate the file. Now, key thing to remember is you do have to create it for the Pi user, but you have to create it for the Home Assistant user since Home Assistant runs underneath the Home Assistant user if you have done it the way that uh, my videos have said. So you see me switching to the Home Assistant user and generating keys for this one as well. Once we're done generating the keys, we will then need to uh, move them over. So to do so, what I did is I exited out of that and went back to Pi. Now I'm gonna switch to the below terminal, which is the Google Pi that I have set up, and I need to build the uh, directory. So in order to do that, we're gonna do an install dash D dash M 700 and build the .ssh directory with the correct permissions. Once we do that, then we can copy over our keys. So we're gonna use the cat command and copy over both keys. First, I'm gonna copy over the Raspberry Pi, uh, or at least the Pi user keys. We'll copy over to it. I'm using the IP address of my Google Pi, and we will append that to the authorized keys uh, file that is located in it in the in the Pi users.ssh file. It'll ask you for the password once, but once and only once is all it will ask you for. After this, you should be able to enter the pass or SSH without uh, using a password. So we're going to do both of them. So you see me switching user back to the home assistant. We'll copy that guy's keys as well over and that should be good enough. Now that we have the keys set up, what we're going to do is we're going to install the Pandora software. This is going to be called Piano Bar. So using the latest version of Stretch for Raspbian, you don't have to install any other pieces. You just have to install Piano Bar using that app get. Then we're going to cd to the config directory and then to the Piano Bar directory. Okay, Inside here is the config file. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up that config file. Inside there, you're gonna put in your uh, default config. You can also create a new file. You just need to put your password and your username the, to your Pandora account. Okay, in here is all you need to do. And then down below is the different key bindings of the different uh, keystrokes that will cause the play and pause and quit and stop and like and unlike basically your Pandora stuff that you'll use. Once you put that in there, we will then also need to create a FIFO or a first in, first out so that we can make this all work properly. So to do this, we're gonna do uh, the command make FIFO 
And then we're going to put that in this directory in this config folder. And we're going to name it CTL. So we're going to go to piano bar and then CTL. That's all you have to do is type that command right there. Then once that's done, as you can see, here I'll clear it out. Um, you've got the control right there. So that is our FIFO. That way we can basically echo commands into that control basically and get it to work. You'll add that to the configuration file right here as FIFO equals. And if you notice, there's the path to it that we just created. You'll add that to the configuration file and that way you can and control stuff uh, by passing those different key binding characters to the FIFO. So now once that is finished, we will then need to uh, switch user back to our home assistant directory. Okay, and we'll need to configure our YAML file. Okay, so our configuration.yaml file. So we'll go to the bottom, enter shell command is what we're going to be using is shell command. And then each one of these commands we will enter and it'll basically allow us to run Linux shell commands through Home Assistant. So the start, I'm just going to SSH to my Pi and start Piano Bar for the volume up or volume down. Um, you can enter multiple characters if you want, like uh, the open and close parentheses are the volume up, volume down. I like doing it in four level increments. There's also the S1, S0, and so on and so forth to select your different stations that you may have. And that's basically how you do it. Okay, now you will take and you will go to if this then that you'll create yourself a new applet. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out different videos on YouTube. You can check out my uh, Google Pi GPIO control uh, video that will show you exactly how to do this. So we're created an utterance that says tell Home Assistant to play music, uh, then make a web request, which basically that you know uh, is the way to do it. I, I did tell Home Assistant because the problem is uh, if you say uh, ask Pandora to play music or play Pandora music or something like that, those are actually already custom uh, tags in. In the Google API so you can't use that so I use tell home assistant to play music and it's just a simpler one gave it some other utterances okay having home assistant play music yada yada, yada. here's the meat of it you got basically your URL, so your web address, you know, and then you're going to choose services because the shell command is service, then shell command, and then you're going to use the the keyword that you designated in your uh, YAML file. So what we're going to do is I'll show you that real quick. Let me open this back up, get it down to the bottom. All right, so basically this word that's between the slash and the question mark is what you're going to use is your different header words right here so if i want to you know quit then i would change this to a quit i would uh pause whatever you type in here uh, it, it, this first little piece, that's what you type in here for the command. That is it. You don't even need, now you're still going to choose that you want this to be a post method and you want it to be application JSON. You choose those two, but you, there is no body. The body, the, it's all in this API call command. Okay. So that is literally all that you have to do to get uh, it to recognize the different commands. So you just create different applets, create multiple different applets, telling it to volume up, volume down, all that stuff. So like what I've done is, um, like for instance, let me just back up. Here's all my different applets. I've got a have hopuses, turn the volume down, the play different musics, uh, stop, stop, start, you know, all those different things. All right. So that's how you set that up is, is through that uh, applet way of putting in substituting that word. Once we get that all said and done, then it works perfectly. And I'll show you that right now. All right, hello guys, sorry for the audio, but I just wanted to make this quick. Welcome to my living room. But I just wanted to show you, this is where I've got my home assistant hooked up, it's right behind me actually. It's kind of hidden away, so that way you can't see it. But I want to show you that it really does work, uh, that whole setup that we've done. So here we go. Hey Google, have home assistant play music. I think I've got it set up on Christmas. Having home assistant play music. I think I've got it set up on Christmas music. Yeah, there it is. Of course, it's a very quiet song. Let's change it to something a little crazier. Hey Google, have Home Assistant play disturbed music. Okay, having Home Assistant play disturbed music. So we'll change the channel to my disturbed channel. And there it is. So, hey Google, have Home Assistant turn down the volume. Sorry, I don't understand. Hey Google, have Home Assistant turn down the volume. So it really does work, and you can turn the volume up, turn it down, you can pause. Hey Home Assistant, or hey Google, have Home Assistant pause music. Hey Google, have Home Assistant pause music. Of course, I may have the, I may have the wrong command, so 
you got to learn your own commands that you put in. But that's basically it. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick little intro. Like I said, if you want to see uh, more, see the in-depth stuff on it, click that link uh, that's coming up here at the end of the slides and check out the in-depth video to know all the different little components of how to do it, as well as check out the link of the day. The link is going to be for allbattery.com check that place out if you choose that link link will be down in the description below um, they have literally everything from nickel metal hydrite lithium batteries lead acids uh, lipo i mean everything lithium iron phosphate they got all the cool stuff and at really good really reasonable prices uh, check them out hit that affiliate link down below helps the channel out so definitely check those guys out as well as like subscribe share and all that jazz it helps out the channel a ton as well as get down there into those links and check out that Amazon Prime. That is a great service. I use it all the time. I cannot believe I, I, I never had it before. Two-day shipping and all that stuff. You get a free 30-day trial just by clicking the link down below. And it helps out the channel as well. So do that. I love to give you guys some cool stuff that I use. And those are two different services that I use. That All batteries is fantastic. I order my batteries around here for that. As well as check out that Amazon Prime. That is a great tool and a great thing to use. So guys, I'm out. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. And uh, that ought to do it. We'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.